struggling? Why are we not getting into the pinnacle of the sport? Whereas we should. Uh, uh, we have the, uh, the, the, the talent, we have the people, we have everything what we need right here in, in, in our country. But we're not hitting that mark. And if you take countries like Australia, who, who played against us in 1996, you're, you're pretty much, you know, constantly you're played against. They're still on top form. 1996, they were on top form right now still they are um, what do you think what's going on first i must say that yes people can say that the 96 era was the golden era but i will go beyond yes. beyond uh, 96 as well there were quite a lot of brilliant cricketers who represented ceylon then sri lanka unfortunately we did not have test status they were not playing in the big league. I'm sure they would have been as good as anyone who were good at the time. But opportunities were less and cricket was more or less um, a part-time thing for, for the guys who played in that or played in the, those the, the those good old days. Yeah. But the change took place from the time we got test status. So. I think we need to re remember, yeah. yes. recognize the guys who were involved in that period which opened doors for people for, like us exactly. and then going beyond. By saying that, I think we have had a slide in the last three to four years. I would put it down. You, you were talking about Australia. They do have sustainable systems. When you have systems documented, what you need to do is review them mm. annually. This is what the ICC does. We learned a lot being in the ICC. That's why I said at the outset, one of the greatest thing, uh, things for me was working for the governing body. Mm. They come up with rules, regulations, and it is reviewed annually and those decisions are reviewed by a cricket committee and in the, know about the game. in the cricket committee they have people who knows about the game and it is not only people um, who have just been involved as cricketers they'll have a match referee they'll have an umpire uh, a commentator but people who have played the game at the highest level and they meet annually if needed before that and they decide what changes or what needs to be maintained or what need, uh, changes that needs to be done. But here, looking at our cricket board constitution, I don't like to talk about it, uh, Mahesh, but just because you asked me, every time an elected body comes in to power, they say they have a high-powered cricket committee. From what I know, there is no status for the cricket committee in the cricket board constitution. So who makes these decisions? Right? When we were playing, maybe prior to that, they would have had very limited clubs, 8 to 10. But from what I remember, when I was playing, I think we had about 12 teams. Now we have 26 teams. It's been diluted. Why have they done it? Not to promote the game in that sense. We need to look into those areas and come up with sustainable systems. We've been very lucky until recently, we've been producing cricketers through our school system. Mm. We've got a very strong school system, but by saying that, how many times have we won an under-19 World Cup? How many times have we made it to the knockout stage of a of an under-19 World Cup? When I told you that I stayed out of the media attention or limelight, people might get the impression, oh, these people are staying out and talking. So that's the reason I never came out to speak about what I felt. Because I feel to do what you feel what is right, you have to have a like-minded group and you need to have authority. With the system, I doubt it whether we'll get that authority to make the changes that we feel that needs to happen for the betterment of the game. Everyone says that we are here for the betterment of the game. 
But where's the betterment? But where's the betterment then?